before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Hello boys and girls and welcome to Assembled. My name's Nige and this week we have got a great assembly for you where we are going to be looking at the history of Queen Elizabeth II. No doubt there will be times throughout your life when you will look back on history and remember exactly where you were when you heard certain news. And perhaps you will remember also always where you were and what you were doing at the time you heard Queen Elizabeth II had passed away and died. And actually now we have a new monarch called King Charles III, who is her son, who has taken over the throne. And even in our recent history, we celebrated 70 years, the platinum jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, where we celebrated in so many different ways of all she had achieved on her time on the throne. I even remember further back than that, in 1977, now that's a long time ago, when I was seven years of age and actually living in Cornwall and it was the Silver Jubilee for the Queen. 25 years on the throne and actually I'm going to show you a picture of that right now. Can you believe how small I looked and can you see my socks pulled up and the crown on my head? Well actually I remember that as if it was yesterday and I'm sure you will remember where you were when you hear the news about the Queen passing away and also remember the Platinum Jubilee. And today we're going to look at two points. Number one, we are going to look at honouring and actually the history of the reign of Queen Elizabeth and all she achieved upon the throne. And number two, we are actually going to be looking at thankfulness and the appreciation of all she achieved whilst on the throne. Are you ready? We're going to learn lots today together. Come on, let's do that now. Queen Elizabeth II celebrated her platinum jubilee of 70 years on the throne in 2022, making her the longest serving monarch in the UK history. When she became queen and went to the throne in 1952, she was only 26 years of age and she was on a trip to Kenya. When early in the morning on the 6th of February 1952, she heard the news that her father, King George VI of Great Britain, had passed away in his sleep after a long illness. Queen Elizabeth II was born Elizabeth Alexandra Mary. Her Majesty never thought she would ascend to the throne, as her father, King George VI, was the second son to King George V, and his oldest brother, who was called King Edward, was to become king. On becoming king, Edward VIII fell in love with a lady from America who had previously been married, but this meant he could no longer stay as king. He soon decided to give up his position and abdicated the throne, handing the kingship over to his younger brother George. Princess Elizabeth saw her father become king at 10 years of age and suddenly her world had changed as now Elizabeth, the eldest of two sisters, would soon become the queen when the king passed away. Little did Elizabeth realise that in 16 years time she would become queen and reign on that throne for 70 years. Raising a family as queen has not been easy as this task has had the world's eyes upon them and like many families, they have seen heartache and pain, and not the least when her daughter-in-law and the mother of her grandchildren passed away in a car accident in Paris in 1997. The Queen has travelled over one million miles while she has been on the throne, and visited over 200 foreign countries even undertaking her 16th visit to Australia when she was 85 years of age and her husband was 90. 
During World War II and the heir to the throne, Elizabeth was just 14 years of age when at 14 she was giving live broadcasts to the nation's children during the wartime, ensuring them that everything would be okay. King George and his wife and the two girls, Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret, would become the symbol of hope as each morning after the Blitz bombings that took place in London, they would walk the streets and talk to people and see the damage that had been done. In 1947, Elizabeth married Prince Philip, the love of her life, where they stood shoulder to shoulder and served the nation until he was 91 and passed away in 2021. During her reign, the Queen has seen the popular rise of television, man walking on the moon for the first time. She has had 14 Prime Ministers in the UK and over 170 different Prime Ministers right across the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is 54 countries where the Queen is seen as the head of state. As the head of state of 54 countries, she has seen so much with the introduction of the internet, the personal computers within each home and everybody having mobile phones. During this 70 years, life has changed considerably. So much has changed, but the Queen's desire to serve has never faltered. At age 21, the Queen pledged, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to our great imperial family of which we all belong. Queen Elizabeth has certainly managed to fulfill her pledge during her reign. And what an incredible leader Queen Elizabeth II was when she diligently served our country so well for over 70 years. And what an example to us all. I wonder if you remember the four-day celebration we had of the Platinum Jubilee, when we just celebrated so well and did so many different things. Perhaps you can remember what you did at that time. And we're going to look at a few of those things right now that happened throughout the country. And straight after, I'm going to tell you a story of 1977. Remember the picture that I showed you? And what happened when I saw the Queen? So I've got a great story for you this week. It's about the time I saw the Queen. You may remember the picture I showed you earlier with my long socks and my hat on, and that was 1977. In fact, it was the Queen's Silver Jubilee, which is 25 years of being on the throne. And the Queen was actually doing a tour of the UK. And on this day, she was visiting Cornwall. Her boat, Britannia, had been moored in Falmouth and she was going to take a car ride to Truro where she was going to have a meal with lots of dignitaries. Now, I wasn't invited to the meal, but as a family, we decided to stand on the road between Falmouth and Truro so we could see the Queen. Perhaps she would go past and she could see my hat. I had won a competition with that hat. We actually got to where we were going to stand and a policeman said to me, what you need to do is come and stand here because the Queen will come past in her car and this is the side of the road that she will be on. We waited for hours. One hour passed, two hours passed, three hours passed and still no Queen. And then suddenly I saw a Rolls Royce coming up the road. The standard flag was waving on the front of the Rolls Royce. We knew it was the Queen. Everybody started cheering and waving at the Queen. And she indeed came past my side of the road. As the car came around the corner, there was the Queen. I proudly stood up and waved to her. I waved my flag. I showed her my hat. And the Queen looked directly at me. The Queen started waving. I'm sure she wasn't just waving to the crowd, but she was waving at me. I wonder if she liked my hat. 
and that was the day I saw the Queen. Now, why did we go and see the Queen? We went to see her because we wanted to honour her and we wanted to tell her how important it was that we thought she was wonderful and how, what a great job she was doing and to show her that she was very special. Now, within our lives, whether at school, with friends, at home, with family, or perhaps just acquaintances we all know, we come across people who are VIPs, very important people, and actually they are special. So let's ensure, even though they may not be kings and queens, we treat everybody with respect and show them how special they are. But where do the British monarchy come from? Across the world today, there are 30 different monarchies. However, the most famous of these royal families would be the royal family of the United Kingdom. From the royal weddings, to the Queen's Christmas speeches, to the famous death of Princess Diana, the United Kingdom royal family has been grabbing the headlines of the papers since papers began. But where did it all begin? Well, I'm going to take you back to the year 829, where a king called Egbert of Wessex began to increase his power around England by conquering the kingdoms in every direction, and he became the first king of England. Over the next 700 years, England saw many kings from many different family lines. But in the late 1600s, there was a king and his wife. But they only had one son to be their heir, and the heir to the throne didn't have any children. So who would succeed him? So in 1701, Parliament passed an act called the Act of Settlement, which stated when the royal line ended and the king who had no children had died, they should restart the royal family with one of the king's distant relations, and Sophia of Hanover in Germany was chosen. Although Sophia did not become queen herself, as she had died before the king had died himself, Sophia's son became king in 1714 and he was known as King George I. And over the subsequent 300 plus years, all British monarchs have descended from the line of King George I. The Act of Settlement declared many things, and one of those things being that the king or queen could only come from Sophia of Hanover and from a descendants and line, and they also could not marry someone who was Catholic. But in the 16th century, King Henry VIII fell out with the Catholic Church as he wanted to divorce his wife and they said he wasn't allowed to. So he broke away from the Catholic Church and started a new church called the Church of England. And since that time, the monarch has been the head of that church. Within the UK, the role of the king or queen is to be the head of state, and this is limited to ceremonial duties, where the elected government of the people are asked by the queen or the king to run the country on their behalf. A new heir to the throne takes over from a king and queen as soon as they die. Although the queen has been on the throne for 70 years, there are already people who are in line to take her place. Her son, Prince Charles, will be the next king, his son, Prince William, will be the king after that, and Prince William's son, Prince George, will become the king way in the future. But a monarch cannot succeed to the throne unless they have the approval of Parliament. Queen Elizabeth II has been the longest British monarch in history and has served our country diligently over 70 years, with over 75% of the UK country still in favour of the royal family. So isn't it interesting how the monarchy came about and how the throne gets passed down from one person to another. And now we have a new king, King Charles III, reigning on the throne. And right now we're going to do our review of the week and answer our five questions together. Come on, let's do that now. This week we have been reviewing the reign of Queen Elizabeth II 
and in 2022 saw the celebration of her milestone Platinum Jubilee, where she became the UK's longest serving monarch in history, serving and reigning for 70 years. Elizabeth became Queen on the 6th of February 1952, when her father King George VI passed away in his sleep after a very long illness. Just before her 26th birthday, the Queen took the throne and after 70 years of seeing the world develop and change considerably, during her reign she has become adored and loved throughout the world and is probably during her reign known as the most famous person alive. The Queen recently lost her husband Prince Philip when he reached the grand age of 99 years of age and had stood by the Queen all the way through her reign. Prince Philip was loved by Queen Elizabeth II and was the love of her life and is very much missed by the Queen and her family. The family line of the royals had changed considerably throughout the years and had come from different powerful family lines. But in 1701, Parliament decreed through the law of settlement that due to the present king not having any children to succeed him, the royal family would descend and continue from the line of a distant relative, Sophia of Hanover, where her son became king and was King George I. Since that time, all of our royal families, kings and queens, have descended from the line of Sophia of Hanover. Queen Elizabeth II never expected to be queen as her uncle Edward, the king, and just a short while into his reign, met a divorced American lady called Wallace Simpson. He immediately fell in love, but could not keep his kingship due to her being divorced. King Edward therefore abdicated the throne and passed the kingship to his brother, King George VI, Elizabeth's father. So at the age of 10, Elizabeth became the next in line to the throne. Over the time the Queen has reigned, she has fulfilled her pledge to serve the people of the United Kingdom and the 54 countries of the Commonwealth around the world, of which she is the head of state. She has served and led each country with continued honour, integrity and diligence. Let's consider these five questions. 1. How old was Elizabeth when she became Queen? 2. What is the name of the ancestor that all kings and queens descend from since 1701? 3. What do you think it would feel like to be king or queen? 4. Being king or queen has the eyes of the world upon you constantly. What do you feel it would be like to always have the papers following you and taking pictures? 5. When does the heir to the throne take over the position of king or queen? And welcome back boys and girls. We trust and hope that you've enjoyed our assembly together as we have looked at the reign of Queen Elizabeth and her 70 years upon the throne. And this week we've looked at two things together, haven't we? Number one, we've looked at the history of Queen Elizabeth and honouring everything that she achieved upon the throne. Number two, we looked at appreciation and being thankful for everything that she'd done. And perhaps that can lead us to being thankful to those around about us who help us every single day. And as we go forward, we are actually going to see so much change because now we have a new king. There's going to be a coronation. There is going to be new stamps. There's going to be new coins and new money. And also, we will see a new words to our national anthem. So I leave you today to say, have a good week, stay safe, and God save the King.